Tomorrow night, Ireland play Finland at a sold-out Tala in what is an absolutely massive game for Vera Power's side. To talk about the match, I'm delighted to say we're rejoined by uh, former Ireland manager Sue Ronan. Sue, how are you getting on? Good, lads. How's it going? Yeah, pretty good. Um, we hope that the stadium is as rocking as it should be because there's some possibility that some of these tickets aren't going to end up being used. But fingers crossed that actually the ground is full because this is kind of a crescendo moment for this team and so with that and the hype and the expectation, what do you expect in terms of a performance tomorrow from the team? Well, first of all, I agree with you. Um, I really hope everyone that's bought a ticket uh, went to the trouble of, of going online within the first half an hour when the ticket sold out. Bought a ticket will actually go tomorrow night. Um, the weather's looking okay. It should be a lovely evening. Let's hopefully, uh, let's fill out that stadium and have it rocking, as you say, uh, because, you know, this could be an historic moment for, for the Irish team. Um, we could qualify for our, for our first playoff for the World Cup. Uh, we were previously in a playoff for European Championships, but never for a World Cup. So um, let's hope everyone has bought a ticket, actually turn up tomorrow night and go along. Um, in terms of what to expect, um, I think it's going to be a great occasion. Um, I think... Uh, the, the team would have had this one earmarked in, in the back of their mind for a long time. Um, you know, as one they were really looking forward to, one that they they you know they want to win and one that they need to win. Um, I suppose they, they don't in terms of the points we looked at were what is it one point ahead of um, Finland, um, but you know we, we, you want to you want to win the match tomorrow night and qualify for that playoff. Uh, as I said, make it an historic moment. So. You know, I think the girls be well prepared. They've been looking forward to this game for a long time, as the management have. So it should be a great occasion. I wish I was there myself, but unfortunately, I can't be. How, if you, if sorry, if you were manager, Sue, would you, would you be happy that the Finns have changed their manager? Obviously, on the back of the Euros, uh, they're coming to Tala. It's a good atmosphere. It looks like this is a set of players that could potentially crumble. Or do you think there'll be that manager bounce? You know, you could get it could go either way. Um, you usually do get a management bounce, as you know yourself. When uh, we see it in the Premier League all the time, when manager changes hands, um, the next game the team are unrecognisable. You know, from what they've been performing all along. Um, so we could very well see that there's going to be players in that Finland team who'll be really disappointed with how this campaign has gone for them. Um, also, how the Euro finals has gone for them. They they lost all three games uh, against Germany, Spain and Denmark. And, you know, they were beaten, as I think it was 3-0 by Germany, 4-1 by Spain and 1-0 by, by Denmark. So while in the Denmark game, you know, they did pretty well, the scoreline the other two suggests they were beaten quite well. Um, so there'll be players there. And you look at the the, the likes of Westerlund, who's been around a long time, um, uh, and many other players too, they'll want to now put in a performance uh, to try to turn this round. Um, they'll want to impress a new manager who's come in, uh, although I think it is just someone who's come in uh, in the interim for the two games to see out the campaign, to try to galvanise the team. The, the time frame to replace Anna Signo is probably far too short. Um, and I'm sure there's some consistency amongst the way the national teams play in Finland. My understanding is this uh, guy is from the under-17 yeah. team. Yeah. So, um, look, you could get very well get that bounce. Um, but, I mean, even besides that, I think Finland really haven't played well for the last few years. I'm sure individually all those girls will want to try to address that and try to put in some sort of a performance. So that's something we do have to be wary, wary of. Uh, how important is the fact that we beat them? Like... I, I, <laughs> Because the campaign has been so fractured, there's been a tournament in the middle of it, as you pointed out, the manager's been sacked. Is there mm -hmm. much that you lean on? Like, do we do we expect uh, continuity of selection? Can they lean back on that match at all? Or do you just need to forget that completely and, and treat this one as an entirely new challenge? I think they do have to treat it as an entirely new challenge. Um, I mean, there's been some suggestion that they were caught in the hops when we played them in Helsinki. I, I don't agree with that, to be honest. Um, I, I've said it, I think, on, on this program before. I think Finland have been a team on the slide for a number of years, um, whereas we've been a team on the ascension. We've been on the up. And if you look at the, the rankings now in the, in the world, we're ranked ahead of Finland, where that obviously wasn't the case when the draw was made because by virtue of the fact Finland are second, are second seed, uh, in currently second seed in this group so we were ranked behind them but now that has reversed and that's that shows that our results have been really good in the last couple of years and theirs haven't um you know so i i think we're a team on the ascendancy and i don't think uh, they were caught on the hop i think they would have known that in the last time around but having said that 
you know, maybe now they, they might be better prepared. Maybe there was a bit of complacency. I don't know what, what went on in the Finland camp. Maybe the fact they were second seed, they, they, they didn't take us as seriously as they should have. That won't happen this time around, I'm sure. Um, but for me, I think we're a better team at the moment. I think we're we're so so uh, we we do so well defensively. We're, we're you know we're flamboyant in attack. We can score goals from a number of of, of positions on, on the pitch. Many of our players can score goals. Um, we can score from set play. We can score from from play. Um, we don't seem to be nervous at all, no matter who we play. You know, I think the crowd would be a real factor for, for us tomorrow. There's a great connection between us and the, and the, and the fans now. I think uh, that will really galvanise us in any in any of those tough moments, which we will have, no matter how the game goes. You know, if you're if you're doing really well in the game, you're always going to have one or two tough moments. Um, but yeah, I think the last one was a one-off uh, from from Finland's point of view. They'll have forgotten that, but you know they they'll be well prepared as we will for the game uh, tomorrow. And like it's in both their hands. If, if Finland win their last two games, they'll they they'll they'll pip us to second. That's the um, other thing, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it's still in their hands. So they've got a lot to play for. Also, they're not out of it yet either. You know. We just spoke Sue, this morning about Keith Long at Bowes and. Um, like when there is that connection with the crowd, it it I, I, it it does mean something, I think, and you can see kind yeah. of like the the team as a collective actually sort of, you you might be having a seven out of ten performance, but you win. Whereas if you have a six yeah. out of ten performance, you just lose quite badly. But like, yeah. isn't isn't this an opportunity for this this kind of burgeoning connection between the the Irish crowd and this team to to really actually yeah. have an have a, have an influence on the game? Because as we said, Finland yeah. are kind of there for the taking. Yeah, no, absolutely they are. And I, I firmly believe the crowd will be the 12th man or 12th woman, whatever you want to call it, tomorrow. You know, I really do think they'll get behind the team. And there, as as you said yourself, there's that connection there. And win, lose, or draw over the years, the, the Irish team stayed out. They, they engaged with the fans after the match. They had photographs taken, autographs uh, signed. And that was a tough thing to do when you just lost a game. And they did that in my time. They, they probably did it in, in the time before me. They did it in Colin Bell's time. And indeed, they do it now. But there's that connection has been there. It's been building and building. And it's like a crescendo now. And the crowd are really, really behind them. And I'm a big Arsenal fan, as you probably know. And I, I see it even happening in, in, uh, in the Emirates, where that mm. connection now with the, with, the, with the team has really propelled them onto things that they wouldn't have done before. So it absolutely can help, you know. And I think it will be significant tomorrow. The um, quality of performance you've been talking about there has been steadily ticking up. The, the mistakes mm -hmm. that... Uh, would have happened in Vera Powell's first campaign. They seem to have been ironed out. There also seems to be strength yeah. and depth. And yeah. the, the training camps they've had, you know, they, they played friendlies kind of very much off-Broadway. And we, yeah. been, I don't think anybody saw the game against the Philippines, for example. But it gave her the ability to develop a squad, some competition for places, but just to make sure that the uh, style of play was completely inculcated. Everybody knows what they're supposed to do whenever they get the ball in possession and out of possession, everybody knows what they're supposed to do as well. Absolutely, and that has been steadily um, improving and growing, as you say, over the last number of years since Vera came in. Um, her first game, I think, was Ukraine at home, where we, we had a fantastic win, but then we went away to Greece and we only drew one all, and that was a significant factor as well, probably in us not qualifying out that group or not finishing second. Um, as much as the defeat to, to the Ukraine was away from home. But those type of, of, of mistakes, those type of results are not happening anymore. We have been steadily growing, we're steadily growing confidence. We've been playing A-listed teams. We've played Australia, we've played Denmark, we've played Iceland, we've played teams, you know, in the top 10, 15 in the world. And we've held our own. We've beaten some of them and maybe narrowly lost to, to some of them in the early days too. But as I mentioned earlier, we've we've now gone up in the rankings and that's you know you know you, know, you get points your coefficient that comes from the the results that you're having in competitive games and in friendly games so we've been getting those points for the results we've been getting so we've improved our positioning whereas the Finns have gone the opposite direction so you know that's a huge factor and you're right there's such competition all over the the, the team now and all over the pitch and if, if one player is not available the next one that comes in knows exactly what's expected and I, I was even trying to think of the team this morning myself and you know while the certain players will, will be automatic on, on the team sheet there's others then that it's touch and go whether it's this player or that player and that's what you want in a squad where would you play Katie McCabe? 
Where would I play Caden McCabe? Uh, it's an interesting question. I I always like Caden further up the pitch. Um, I, I think out and out left wing for me is where I'd play her. But look, I mean, she can she's she's shown she can play that defensive role and attack then and come onto the ball where she's very effective. She can also play on the right side. I'm not sure Vera's ever played her there. I think maybe in the early days she would have played there once or twice, or even during a game she's comfortable at switching over and cutting in onto her left foot. Um, you could play Kate anywhere really you know she's such a strong player she's such a technical player um, and she gives you know she gives 150% for her country every time she puts on that green jersey and, and she inspires those around her to do the same There was a time when it kind of felt like we needed her to play centre midfield or number 10 and everything had to go through her but now we just have enough players that actually if she mm. does play a left wing back role that we can still run the game through her and she can be super yeah. effective but actually we also have other players who are capable of doing some of the things maybe not at exactly the same level as her and, and that's the evolution of the squad too yeah, absolutely. And don't forget, I mean, Katie is a fantastic player and she's a world-class player. And that's something over the years, going back to previous campaigns in my time and in, in the, the time of managers before us, we didn't really have that world-class player who could turn a game. And other teams that we came up against, even, say, the likes of Wales, um, uh, the likes of Scotland, Scotland would have had Kim Little, um, Wales, just the name is just escaping at the moment, but they had a world-class player at the time who's still playing uh, at the moment uh, towards the latter end of her career. But other teams that were maybe in and around us had that one player who could turn a game, and Katie can do that. And, but she's not the only one that can. Denise O'Sullivan's a world-class player as mm. well. Um, and, and then you have other players that have been around for so long. And Megan, Megan Connolly is, you know, has has pulled it out of the bag for, on, on occasions as well. She's a fantastic player as well. And Heather Payne, for me, has been fantastic in this campaign. And I, she's been absolutely unbelievable, you know. So all over the pitch, we now have players who can turn a game for us if things are going are going wrong or our game is, is, is going the wrong way for us or things are getting tough, you know. And that's what you need. Um, and that's the fine margins that the, the good teams have when they need it. If we, if we were to end up in the World Cup and you see like TG Carr showing games in the National League of late as well, just how much of a boost would it be for something that is really still fledgling in this country? Look, it's the catalyst in every country where a team has qualified for the World Cup. The women's national, the, the women's national team qualifying for a World Cup has really been the catalyst for the game in that country to really take off and go to the next level. Um, and that's something that we're just waiting for to happen here. Yes, there's been huge growth over the last 10, 15 years. Um, but I think a women's national team qualifying for finals, you're going to get everything then that would come in behind it. You'd get your broadcasting. Uh, you know, your your Irish team would be visible everywhere. They, and they are quite visible at the moment, but they'd even be more visible, you know. But the inspiration that, that would give to the future players, you know, to young girls to play, the future referees of the game, future coaches. Probably government everywhere. money as well, like... Government money as well, absolutely, and that's the vital thing. You know, I mean, the more successful you are, the more money you, you get. Um, which, when you think of it, you need the money to be successful in the first place. But that's just the way it works, you know. But look, that would be just the catalyst, I think, for the game here, and that would definitely push it onto the next level. Yeah, in a way, uh, like a, a lot of things that happen in Ireland, it's taken an outside force to propel that forward. Like if the Sky money and the Sky ads for Katie McCabe around town, like that has done more than anything that uh, the government have done for Irish women's football over the last while and it certainly has helped the FAI get their house in order and see that there's a massive market out there for it as well so you know yeah. sometimes no, these things do need a, yeah. a, a propulsion a push no absolutely and you know when I used to work in the FAI the one thing that really uh, I thought it was fantastic but it frustrated me at the same time because we didn't have it in football was the the absolutely brilliant activation that Little did with the GAA uh, the women's team and I just thought it was fantastic everything they did it was thought out properly um, you know and th th it really inspired so many players to play it, it made such awareness of that game around the country and it was just fantastic and it was something that we didn't have at the time we didn't have those standalone sponsors but that's obviously all changed now and fair play to the likes of Sky uh, Ireland Cadbury's were coming in uh, and backing something that was on the the, the grow you know it was growing it was on the right tra trajectory and it was really helped propel it even further uh, up like that, that ladder. That, so that, that little thing has been mentioned like so often. Like this is mm. this is a corporation that's making a lot of money who decided we're going to make an effort with this yeah. and we're going yeah. to benefit, but we'll actually you know we're going to give something back. And I mean, as yeah. somebody who follows the League of Ireland, who I'm like, where has this imagination been in the men's game for the last like yeah. thirty years? But it's like Lidl yeah. showed this can be done and they 
I mean, they, it was such a reciprocal arrangement as well, and it's actually been yeah. like a spawn for other things to happen in women's sport, I yeah. feel, anyway. Yeah, no, I agree with you. And, you know, they did. They took a chance because there wasn't much specific um, sponsorship around women's sport in general, probably in the, at that time. And if you remember as well, they came out with a very, very controversial ad beginning to launch it. And I remember, you know, I've been looking at it and I'm sort of saying, what the hell is that? That's, you know, ruining our game. They had something about this, a bit of pink ball and they were calling it a lady ball or something. I can't remember, but it was just um, to try. It was like the hook to try yeah, to catch absolutely. everybody and get the attention. And it did. And it was just, that was just, to, you know, um, a front for it as such. And once they got everybody hooked, then it's just gone in, in the right direction. That's been up and it's just been fantastic. You have to hand it to the people mm. behind the marketing team there. Yeah, 100%. Now you can see it happening with uh, the women's national football team too with Sky at the moment. Absolutely. So hopefully that has a knock-on sure. impact on the women's national for league sure. as well. Again, yeah, for you, sure. you sound confident of results. Give us your prediction. Yeah, I, I'm, I said 2 nil a few days ago and I, I, I sort of stick with it. I think we definitely went 2 nil or 2-1. I, I can't see us not winning this game. But look, you know, we, we have to get out there and do the job. I think the players will be well prepared. I think any, you know, difficult moments, they'll get through it with the, with the, with the crowd around them. But I, I predict a win for us tomorrow night.